Breaking news, a school shooting with reports of multiple fatalities, this time in Santa Fe, Texas. Sprawling high school in Parkland, Florida. A crowd of roughly 22,000 concert goers. At least 15 others were injured. America has a problem with mass shootings. They're getting deadlier and happening more frequently all the time. Before 2011, mass shootings happened on average every 200 days. But since then, only 64 days pass in between them. And if it feels like they've taken hold like a virus, it might be because they actually have. In 2015, sociologist Malcolm Gladwell suggested that national school shootings can catch on like a disease. He pointed to the work of Mark Granovetter, whose concept of the threshold tries to explain why the actions of groups can seem inconsistent with the preferences of the individuals in that group. And it's G-R-A-N-O-V-E-T-T-E-R. -E -T -T -E he uses the example of a riot. Essentially, in a crowd of people who are thinking about whether they want to take part in a riot, each person has their own threshold. There are people who are very low threshold people, which means they, they don't even have to see anybody else do it because they're just ready to do that kind of thing. And there are other people who are very high threshold people. They're not going to do it unless they see almost everybody else doing it. And then there are people in between. The idea is that we can't look at the decisions of each person individually. We have to look at them in relation to other people. So in terms of shootings, Gladwell says we should see them as a slow motion, ever evolving riot. As more mass shootings happen, the easier it is for them to keep happening and with increasing frequency. A 2015 paper from Arizona State University found evidence that mass killings occur contagiously in groups. And gunmen in school shootings often reference other school shooters. The 17-year-old shooter in Santa Fe wore the same black trench coat and used the same weapons as the shooters at Columbine nearly 20 years ago. And if that sounds hopeless, it's because it kind of is. We can't actually see the person's threshold. It's not like it's, it's, not like it's a number inscribed on someone's forehead. And so what is, it's not clear what the policy recommendation is that comes out of this analysis, even though it may be an accurate picture of what is driving the number of people that actually do these things. Granovetter himself has doubts, partly because the threshold model is so easily complicated by a spate of other factors. We don't really know what the process is, the psychological or the, or, or the psychiatric process is, and uh, whether there's a lag time that is necessary. So uh, if there has been no school shooting for, let's say, two years, then maybe that there will never be any again, because nobody is thinking about this anymore. And even if we could predict people's thresholds, it's not clear if anything can be done with that information in a justice system where people are innocent until proven guilty. I think that assumes that people have, that each person has a clear cut set of personal principles that it pretty much tells them what they should or shouldn't do. And I think that there are some people who have such a set, but I think there are a lot of people who could do a lot of different things depending on the circumstances and their particular set of principles isn't so clear cut. And I think the people who are school shooters are probably in that category. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.